sit down and have a discussion about this and figure out the answers to these questions. And finally, if you can't do that, I would simply ask you to, in your motion, make it clear that private development is not prevented by this master plan. That with a statement that 1413 is not triggered by this uh, document, and then correct the misstatements. I think that's a fair statement to say, if there are misstatements made, they should be corrected. I have three minutes. I fit right underneath that. With that, I'll be happy to answer that. I would like 15, but I decided to take 30. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Councilman and Councilwoman. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Alan Shai, and I represent uh, Mayo's Island. Um, in the plan, in the Mayo's Island plan, and you guys have seen it, he's pointed out the, the uh, incorrect information in there, and that alone should have you guys, as you put it, the devil's in the details. So if that little bit of detail is wrong, I don't know what else is wrong in there. But that alone should tell you guys to deny it at this point, or at least send it to the point where you can amend this plan. Um, the other thing in the plan, it does mention what they want to see is the island has a district of open space, walking, biking trails, watercraft launches, green space, vet lawn, and so on and so forth. With our proposed development that we had proposed in the past and had been proposed several different other types of development, there has always been green space, public open space that would be part of this project along the banks and along the eastern side and the western side. All this could be achieved at the same time of development being there, increasing the economic base for the city, and also at creating an ownership. The people that work, play, live out there will be ownership of that park that surrounds them. It's, it's a wonderful thing. That's a win-win. I believe in win-wins. I think that's important. The other thing that I, I think that's important that you need to realize is that in one of the notes it says no. Hard costs in 2012 dollars excludes land acquisition, significant demolition, stabilization, contamination, remediation, escalation of costs, and soft costs. According to the to the uh, to the program itself, the first proposed area is about 35 million dollars. They say about another 15 percent needs to be added for soft costs, another 10 percent for contingency, and another 10 percent on top of that. That 35 million dollars would take it to 50 million dollars just in phase one itself. And you guys have the new Coliseum you got to deal with, the new baseball stadium you got to deal with, the renovation of the landmark theater, the bike, the bike race you got coming, the rent skids training camp. You know, we can keep going on and on and on. You know about this. So that that in itself is a problem that you guys got to face. Now, allowing us to have that option that was in the master plan again. Then we can go out and search and get a developer. The developer that was looking at it in 2007, 2008, was about to pull the trigger, has communicated to me and says, hey, we've got a copy of his email. Hey, I'm willing to revisit this thing in 2013. I think it's a viable project, and I think it'll be great for the city of Bridge. So there are a lot of things out there that, that makes this, you know, what we're requesting not something out of the ordinary. So that, that's one of the things I want to make sure you guys are aware of. Um, I don't know if I have much more to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone speaking in favor of this? President Graziano, distinguished council members, my name is Eugenia Anderson Ellis. And I represent a group of active um, citizens who followed this plan for a long time, for years in fact. We're the ones who stormed the, the charrettes and, and made, our, made our opinions known. And we'd like to thank, I mean, the thing that's so thrilling tonight for me is that I'm coming here to thank you. I'd like to thank the mayor for understanding that although the downtown master plan was wonderful and we loved it, that the river was important enough that it really deserved its own consideration. It deserved a plan that was just for it and going ahead with that. I'd like to thank the staff of the city for coming up with the, with the plan as it is and the planning commission because we did hear that. I hear that, that they didn't hear this before now, but we had an opportunity, the planning commission, and we read it and they met several times afterwards to vet it carefully and to make sure that the language at least for the rest of it, I'm not, I don't know about my, my own, but for the rest of the plan, the language did go back to the master plan, 
which we know that you have thoroughly vetted, so that there wouldn't be any discrepancies. We think that, that it is a, um, a really wonderful centerpiece for Richmond, that it's something we move us forward, and we would love to have you approve the entire Riverfront Plan. We think it's a wonderful step for Richmond. We thank you for consideration. Excellent. 
and three is a process of continuous improvement. If you look at the history of the James River, 40 years ago, we had a crisis. We had a river that was heavily polluted. We had key pond. We had to shut down the river for fishing. We had a crisis, and our community and the state responded, and the river now has, has come back. The health of the river is uh, really amazing. And if you haven't been out there recently to be on the water, you should. It's really amazing. Excellent. When you think about the outdoor recreation opportunities, being named Outside Magazine's Best River Town in the country, that we didn't earn that just out of uh, because of Facebook posts. It was because it really is a, a tremendous natural resource and really stands out. There's a lot of river cities in America, but there's only one that's the best outdoor river town in America. Then you come to continuous improvement. And I think the Riverfront Master Plan really lays out that opportunity for our city. And, and the, the center of our region for biking and walking in the future is our downtown corridor. And if you think of the Virginia Capital Trail as one of the first spokes on that wheel, the Riverfront Master Plan is the hub. In the future, as we have more and more cycling, more and more people that are out uh, getting out to see the river part of this outdoor recreation, the Riverfront Master Plan provides that hub for that wheel. So again, uh, sports factors are strongly in favor of the Riverfront Master Plan, and we look forward to working with you to help get this implemented and built out and heavily used in the future. So thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam President, members of council. I'm Jim Watkins. I'm the Deputy Executive Director of Venture Richmond. And I have for you copies of this presentation for you to peruse at your leisure. Um, we commend the city for undertaking this massive endeavor of this roofing plan. Uh, we as Venture Richmond, we serve as your partner to manage the canal walk, the riverfront, the covenants that were uh, put into place in the 1994 agreement. And you've entrusted us to do this. We appreciate what you're doing with the Riverfront Plan. We want to see it succeed. So we've listed some priorities that we would recommend to you, and that's what you'll be receiving. Um, as such, we think the first priority should be, because there are so many things to be taken into consideration with the Riverfront Plan, the first priority would be to complete the canal walk from 10th Street to the Turning Basin. You know, we have a side on the north bank of the canal and it just stops. The walk just dies. We'd like to see that completed. Priority number two would be the Browns Island Dam Walk. To complete that walk, it would give a great opportunity for pedestrians and cyclists to go from one side of the river to the other. Priority number three is Trader Green, where the new road, the new uh, road is taken, uh, is underway at, at this point, and we're looking forward to the amphitheater being a part of this, where we can continue to add and you'll see photos of the various scenes during the folk festival that just occurred last month. And the last shot is the mob on the site that we're losing for the folk festival. And we want to continue on with the folk festival. Priority four would be the Sharko Slip connection to the canal walk, what we call the 13th Street Tunnel, that would connect the canal and Sharko Slip. That's something that's been missing for a number of years, and we'd like to see it in place. And lastly, priority five would be to acquire Mayo Island if, in fact, it becomes available for us for sale. Uh, we have a few concerns. I have 40 seconds to tell you that. The terrace leads to, if where we look at terrace and down to the river, that terrace would lead directly into class three rapids. We don't think that's a good idea. You charge us with running the place. This is our recommendation. Uh, second, you don't need a beach there because 200 yards up on the other side of the island, you have a beach club where people hang out now. Uh, lastly, you have all kinds of issues and time constraints of getting through with the railroad to have this because of canopies that have to go under the trestle. Um, so we think that the terrace on that side is a problem and the terrace on the canal side Terracing down, you would have hardscape and, in fact, eliminate a lot of beautiful green space that exists now for people to walk and enjoy. Thank you.
Once again, Madam Chairman and members of council, my name is Mary Jane Ho with Historic Richmond. And believe it or not, I believe in economic development and I'm here just to applaud you and thank you for the precious time, the positive process, the dollars you spent to plan, and what is becoming more and more the most important asset in our city, our river. We are now known as the best river town in USA, in addition to being known internationally as we received our name Richmond by William Byrd when he came up the river and thought that we looked like a twin city, Richmond on the Thames. The plan is leading the direction with people. It's creating a way to get people to come downtown, create a sense of place, produce more taxes, and attract both our citizens and tourists. We used to flood. We don't flood anymore. This is an opportunity. The James River is the historic part of our city. It will make us a first class city, invoking pride, beauty, and the future enjoyment of all, bringing both people and dollars into our city. Thank you to each of you. Thank you to the planning staff of the city. The plan can bring transformation to the city and the region. On behalf of Historic Richmond, we are in full support of all the opportunities this plan can afford our city and our river. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to bring this back to council for discussion. Existing adopted downtown plan, 
I can show you several instances within the adopted language where we mention Mayo Island specifically. Let me give you the most specific recommendation. On page 7.8, acquire targeted properties for open space. The first priority for allocating funds should be for the acquisition of Mayo Island. The downtown plan recommends that a riverfront park be created at Mayo Island. With that language, which you all adopted in 2009, you kick Mayo Island into 1413. What we have said in here is that in the riverfront plan, if adopted as amended by the Planning Commission, Mayo Island is a part of 1413. If the owners of that property come in to pull a, a building permit in excess of $10,000, there, I will be notified, I will notify Planning Commission, Planning Commission will make a recommendation to you all, and you all will need to make a determination. 2009, that language was specifically put into the downtown plan and is still there. So irrespective of what we do tonight, any activity that is triggered by, by Mayo Island triggers 1413. So I'm a bit at a loss to understand how there's a disconnect between the language in that plan and this by representatives of Mayo. We think the language is very clear, uh, and because it says specifically that we should acquire in 2009, that kicks in 1413. Your second question, Anne? Yeah, I just want to follow up to that question just to make sure. So other parcels of land that are within the river as well as the downtown master plan mm -hmm. does not name a uh, particular property specifically, therefore 1413 would be triggered. Is that, if, is that what you're If we saying? identify an area as open space or parkland on a map in a master plan, we will make we are working under the assumption that there is an acquisition at stake. There are additional properties in the city right now that are being reviewed in conformance with 1413 because there are master plans that have been adopted by city council which show these parcels as being potential green space in the future. We have to go through that due diligence and a couple of those may come to you in the not too distant future. So I want to make sure that everybody's clear that this isn't just a Mayo Island discussion nor is it a USP or a downriver discussion. There are other parcels in the city at which uh, 1413 comes into play. Okay. Um, the, the other question that I asked uh, was in regard, and I appreciate the answer, thank you very much. Um, the other question that I asked is in regards to the recommendation that was also proposed as it relates to the continuation of this to answer some of the questions that were raised for a couple of weeks and whether or not how much impact that has on the on the continuation of the process with the master plan and the timelines that we're working with it. Um, we need to have to meet the 90-day requirement this needs to be adopted on or before December 3rd. Um, so if there are any amendments that you all recommend uh, and changes in language that would kick it to at least coming back here, I'm hoping no later than November 26th. Um, you know, I, I, I think the language, the changes that uh, the representatives of Mayo Island suggested, um, the flood wall, if you want to have questions about the flood wall, ask Mr. Seidel. Um, any development in a floodplain automatically kicks you into Section 90 of the flood of the ordinance. So whether or not we say commercially viable or commercial properties or whatever about the secondary means of access to the site doesn't really matter because it all gets kicked into 9051 as it relates to floodplain development, and that's the controlling uh, ordinance and that's the controlling code over any of that development. Madam President. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Madam President. Thank you. Mr. Oldenburg, uh, when you have property that's, that's uh, shown as part land or serving as a potential development, what happens at that? What happens when an when a applicant <coughs> comes in and, and has that dual classification? How does the city approach it? 
city approaches it. If, um, again, the dual designation has no effect until such time as they want to pull the building permit. So I'm assuming you're going to ask what happens if they want to pull the building permit. I mean, the, the, yes, I mean, that would be the simplest thing. You, you have somebody who wants to pull the building permit. They spend a large amount of money having a, an architectural firm to draw the drawings to get to a building permit. You've spent significant dollars. And at that point, that's when they hand it over to you. Correct. If there is a, if they have a buy right development and it is flagged in the system as being potentially um, in the master plan as acquisition for open space, that does kick in the process. We will need to be notified and that will ultimately come to you all for a determination. Okay, let me, let me back up. Let me ask you again. Uh, buy right, they can develop. Mm -hmm. Buy right in the master plan. It says you have the right to develop, and it's shown that way, but it's also shown as potential park. And what you're saying is, is that potential park trumps the development. If it says that there's an acquisition potential, yes. Only to the extent that it says that we have to go through this process to make the determination whether or not the city is interested in buying it and we'll follow through on that through the appropriation of the necessary funds to make that acquisition occur. If Planning Commission takes a look at it and says, we're not particularly interested in acquiring it, we forward it up to you, and you say we're not particularly interested in acquiring it, we don't acquire it. And so what will end up happening is, is that if the owner of this property does not want to sell it, then we have to go through an eminent domain discussion. With, with the new law that has just passed is a very significant conversation. Correct. Based on what I've heard from Mr. Jackson and others who spoke on that when we were having dialogue about that paper. Uh, so. The difference, well, I'm not the city attorney, so I won't offer a, 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 I, I won't offer a uh, my take on it, but I, I, I do believe that there are, that the city, you all make the final determination on whether or not we proceed with the acquisition. That's helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, to that end, if we chose not to uh, acquire the land, God knows where we get the money from. Uh, you talk $20 million worth of property. Uh, make a, a green space, uh, it better be Disneyland. Uh, 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 the question is if uh, we pull permits for uh, acquisition, uh, it would more than likely be for development. Uh, is that prohibited at that point? If the city opts not to exercise what is, in essence, uh, 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 an option of first right of refusal. If the uh, city says throughout at the end of this 1413 process that it is not interested in acquiring the parcel for parks purposes, that flag is removed off the property and the building permit is pulled and work commits. Uh, I think there's enough uh, confusion around this, this language that it merits putting off for a couple of weeks here. It seems to me that uh, if we're going to do it, we, do it, we ought to do it right. Now, um, I think the language in there is a bit ambiguous for some people who are not experts. And so if we can do any modification of the language, and, and with regards to the other area, uh, Echo Hall uh, and the view shed, uh, we know this is about Echo Hall, and we've been fighting that fight for years now. And there have been efforts to inject language, mischievous language, that can be used against the project if we approve this with this language that we had corrected some years ago. Send it back, council sent that back to the uh, planning commission to have that language straightened out. It was done so, and now, this language has creeped back into the lexicon here, and we're being asked to approve it. And uh, for those two reasons, it, it's imperative, it seems to me, that we ought to delay it for a couple of weeks. There's nothing pressing that we've got to pass. The, the river plan, it's an excellent plan. There's plenty of good stuff in it, and I've always been one who has has preached that we, we ought not to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. But this is so close and so easy, it seems to me, a two-week delay.
delay makes all the citizens in the world see if we can't get it right. Especially since there is no, if even if we pass the deadline, what difference does it make? Who's hurt? No answer. So I'm just saying, uh, it seems to me there's no mad rush here. Question? <laughs> I thought it was. Okay. Who's hurt? What is two weeks by it? Excuse me. What is two Excuse weeks by it? I'm simply saying it buys us the opportunity to correct instrument language that has migrated back into this plan that we had corrected with the downtown plan. And yes, there is a difference in the language. Yes, I, I would like Ms. Olinger to respond on this, <laughs> if you would provide clarification here, because I am understanding there is, in fact, a time constraint that we're operating within, and this plan, even before I was on council, this many members here had opportunity to review If you could provide clarification. Sure. I, I got this. If this is not adopted by... Um, December the 3rd, then basically we go back and start at the beginning and go back through the approval process. Um, what, and there have been lots of times when lots of plans have gone back through the approval process, but I would like to just suggest a couple of things that I think it's important for us if there is going to be a continuance tonight, and I'm not advocating for a continuance, what it is you want from us to bring back in two weeks. I think it is crystal clear, Councilman, that the 2009 downtown plan said that we should acquire Mayo's Island. And I can show, I read one section of the plan, and I can show you four or five other ones. So I think the idea of what happens in section 1413 while not being very crystal clear, says when the city's master plan recommends the acquisition of property for open space, a process commences when a building permit is pulled. Now, they haven't pulled a building permit, but they may. And if they do, there is a process outlined as to how that goes through. Right. That won't change in two weeks because that's an ordinance or that's a code item that would need to get fixed if you'd want more clarity in 1413. I think we have the, the suggestion that somehow this 178 page document has been dropped into the laps of folks in the last two weeks. I would also strenuously disagree with. The recommendations for Mayo Island have been the same since this plan was released in June. Mr. Shia and his representatives have been at every single meeting that I'm aware of that relates to the adoption of this plan and the public vetting of this plan and have raised these concerns and at the note at the September 4th um, Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission said we understand what you're saying, we hear you, and the Planning Commission made a recommendation to go in another direction. You have the opportunity to say something else, but this plan has been very clear about the acquisition, about the, the, the long-term vision for Mayo Island. The downtown plan has been very clear about what should happen to Mayo Island, and I think the decision before you all, either tonight or in two weeks, is what would you like to do with Mayo Island? Well, Downriver USP folks, as you notice tonight, silent on the discussion of the plan, and we've had lots of conversations with them. That, um, if I may, uh, the fact is this, 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 this plan, uh, and, and, and a lot of folks deserve a lot of credit for uh, it being brought to us uh, at this stage of the game. But our attention has been refocused elsewhere major campaign that had everybody did uh, one way or another, even some who were unopposed. Uh, and so I don't know that proper attention has been paid to this. I know it's happened with this council. And uh, the fact
fact is that uh, there are a few areas that need to be re-examined before we go forward. Uh, the Planning Commission previously inserted language that was as mischievous as all get out. And council uh, recognized the red flag and sent it back. It was correct. Uh, and, and it was passed in the downtown master plan. And so uh, there are elements with regards to Echo Harbor, I know for sure, that uh, uh, qualifying languages, a language has been changed. For what reason, we don't know. And I'm simply saying a couple of weeks won't hurt. We don't have to miss a deadline. Uh, uh, and if we miss it, again, if we miss it, who loses? The fact is we need the plan in place, right? But we don't need it right now. Uh, uh, the fact is Chesterfield County has every other day we were reading Chesterfield County doing their comprehensive plan. They're doing a county-wide comprehensive plan, and we're doing ours in bits and pieces. At what point do we do our comprehensive plan? We're way behind state law. And so uh, the rush now seems to be uh, a tennis and a teapot, when in fact we need to do the whole comprehensive plan. What we change in one place has an impact on a whole other neighborhood. We haven't done this the way other uh, uh, municipalities have done it. We ought to get it, at least make sure we give every opportunity for what we do to be done right. Two weeks done period. And I'd like to put that motion in um, if I can wait until everybody has their comments. I'll second
The second item has to do with if we, in fact, continue this measure for two weeks, the item of concern as pertains to Bayo Island, section 14.3, requires an amendment. It, it, that is not, so might I have clarification because I don't see how two weeks is the continuous addresses these matters, especially since it's not clear that language tag was changed and B, that this two week extension does anything relevant to section 14.3. One, three, that wouldn't require an entire amendment. So if I get clarification for that. Mr. Ollinger, just if you could give us a clarification. If we, if this paper got amended in terms of, did you said, Mr. Jewell, is that what you're saying? Yes, it's in the language about some panoramic view shed when that was not even remotely close to the language that we put in there and required the planning commission to put in there. Not even remotely close. If we, my question is, if we amended this paper, does the um, downtown master plan have that same language in it, or is it different in the downtown master plan? The specific language related to parcels, and I've looked at the language, is identical to the downtown plan. Where the word panorama comes up is in the discussion of historic resources, and again, as I said earlier, about a variety of view sheds and a variety of places to see the city from the river and the river from the city. Right. That does not specifically address the issue of USP, Echo Harbor, or any other thing. What it is, is a recommendation to the city that as we go through development processes, there are a variety of views that you have from the city to the river and vice versa. Some of them are wide, some of them are narrow. We should think very carefully about all of them and how changes over time affect them and our view of the river. That is a different discussion than the language that relates specifically to the parcels where we were very careful, and again, if somebody can point out that we made a, a change, I will acknowledge it, but I saw word for word as it related to this parcel, the same language in the downtown plan as it was in this plan. The introduction does talk about how we should look at these things. It is very clear about that, but it does not refer specifically to any particular parcel, but our overall environment in which the river runs. Thank you. Madam President, yes, sir. my only concern is that the, the language for the novice that was originally found uh, in, 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 in downtown plan having to do with view sheds was so apparently minute in its, uh, uh, minute is not the word I really want to use, it was so Apparently inconsequential, I would have never caught it. But those who are trained in this business caught it, and we caused them to uh, to alter that language. We sent it back. Some of us were here. Uh, we caused that to be sent back to planning, and we gave them specific language to change. And and we need to make sure that that is consistent. Uh, in this new permutation with regards to the riverfront plan. That's all I'm asking, is that we maintain fidelity to what we told planning to do.
and to many more. This particular sense of it to the need to deal with the time frame. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah.
after the comma following the word events, insert the phrase and additional other uses limited to. Page 2, line 12, after the word unit, insert the phrase as further described therein. Page 2, line 13, after the comma follow, following the inserted word herein, insert the word and. Page 3, line 22, at the beginning of the line, delete the word attached. After the word plans, insert the phrase attached to ordinance number 2001-308-305, adopted October 22, 2001. Page 4, line 5, after the word B, insert the text allowed to post events. For the purpose of this ordinance, events are limited to those activities that occur outside of the museum hours and may be viewed as accessory to the museum or office for or as a separate reception event. Routine and ordinary office managerial and committee functions of the museum or professional office shall be permitted and are not considered events. An accessory event shall be defined as the use of the property for social or professional function customarily, incidental, and clearly subordinate to the museum or professional architectural organization and office use. A reception event shall be defined as a function hosted by an individual or organization and may include wedding-related functions, community events, or civic events. All events shall be attended and supervised by the property owner or representative of the property owner. Events shall be page 4, line 17, after the, after the deleted word may, delete the phrase hosting events that include Page 5, line 7, after the number 1, delete the word 2 events and insert the word 1 accessory or reception event. Page 5, line 8, after the word people, insert the phrase in 2014, only may be held outside with the use of a tent and a voice amplification system. Page 5, line 9, after the word that, delete the word wedding or wedding receptions and insert the words a wedding or a wedding reception. Oh, yeah. Page 5, line 11, after the word 2, after the number 2, delete the word 12 events and insert the words one accessory or reception event. Page 5, line 12, Mr. after Jewel. the word that, I'm sorry. delete the word wedding or wedding receptions and insert the words a wedding or wedding reception. Page 5, line 13, after the words permitted, delete the phrase, and that two of the 12 events must conclude at, must conclude before 8 p.m. Page 5, line 15, after the number 3, delete the number 15 and insert the number 24. Page 5, line 16, after the comma following the word people, delete the text all of which may be wedding-related events, provided, however, that a minimum of five wedding-related events must conclude before 8 p.m. and insert the text, provided that a up to 12 of these events may be held outside of a maximum of two utilized tents. B, up to 12 of these events may be reception events with a minimum of four concluding by 8.30 p.m and see no food or beverage stations are allowed on the lawn behind the main building. Page 6, line 3, after the number 4, delete the words an unlimited number of and insert the words 24 accessory. After the word events, delete the phrase extended beyond the museum's workday, weekday hours. Page 6, line 4, after the word by, delete the words fewer than and insert the words a maximum of. Page 6, line 5, after the word people, delete the comma, and the phrase provided that these events must conclude by 7.30 p.m. daily except on Thursdays, when events must conclude by 10 p.m. and a search of priorities if off-street parking is available at 2551 Monument Avenue. Page 6, line 10, after the word do, delete the word events, and insert the word event. Page 6, line 11, after the deleted number 150, delete the number 200 and insert the number 150. Page 6, line 12, after the word event, delete the phrase attended by more than 50 people or any event not concluded by 7.30 p.m. daily or by 10 p.m. on Thursday. 
page 6, line 15, after the word shall insert the phrase, include verification that the parking lot at 2551 Monument Avenue is available and. Page 7, line 1, after the word that, insert the phrase, except for the 400 person event in 2014. Page 7, line 2, after the word building, delete the semicolon, and the text, provided that a public address system be public address system for voice shall be permitted for one event per calendar year when used with an intent and concluding by 9 o'clock p.m. Page 7, line 8, after the word exceeding, delete the number 75 and insert the number 50. Page 7, line 11, after the word in, delete the word B and insert the word A. After the word area located, delete the phrase at 1000 BMB Drive and insert the phrase within a 2500 foot radius of the property at 2501 Monument Avenue. Page 7, line 12, after the word A, insert the word shuttle service. Page 7, line 13, after the word service, insert the phrase or similar transportation arrangement. After the word area, delete the phrase at 1000 DMV Drive. I will need a motion to accept the proposed amendment to that paper as read. Councilwoman Newman, will you make that motion? So moved, Madam Clerk. Councilman is voting on Councilwoman's, Councilwoman Newville's motion to accept the amendment as read and to continue the paper to Monday, December the 10th. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newman? Aye. Ms. Crammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. That paper has been amended and will be before council again on Monday, December the 10th. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Before we go to citizen comment, I believe Mr. Jewell has a motion to make. On the previous motion and the confusion <laughs> therewith, uh, I, I'd like to motion to uh, uh, place a motion to reconsider. And that would be? So that would be to? Reconsider the paper on the Riverfront Master Plan. That is correct. Such that we might um, continue the paper for two well, First we have to reconsider it. Then once we get it reconsidered, then we can make that motion. No. <laughs> Uh, folks need to know what they're voting to be consent. I, I think most folks. I would think. We want to. We want to reconsider the flood that we made a moment ago and see if we can get it back on track and get the matter before us again in two weeks. Having gone through the answers. Yeah. Okay. Is there any discussion on this motion? Okay. Call the vote on our council is voting on Councilman Jewell's motion to reconsider item number 14, notice number 2012-202. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newville? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. What a damn sandwich we're to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say aye, but with, with all kinds of clarifications, okay? President Rosiano. Aye. Okay, Mr. Jewell, do you have a motion on this paper? Uh, yes, Madam President. I move that we uh, 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 continue this paper for two weeks. Uh, with it having gone through land use, uh, and that uh, we will take it up uh, that in two weeks, yes. Yeah. Okay, so do you need a second on that motion? Second. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Tyler. You're welcome. Okay, any discussion? Call the question down, Mark. Council is voting on Council Mitchell's motion to continue ordinance number 2012 two weeks and to have the paper go to the land use committee meeting next week. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hiller? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newville? Aye. 
Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Uh, Aye. Oh, we got to be one. The motion has passed. <coughs> the legislation will be sent to next week's land use committee meeting and will be 